Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to Babylon Talmud. Today we're studying Daf Ein Gimel, Daf seventy three of Masechta Yoma. Daf Ein Gimel. The first part of the Daf talks about the coin Meshuach Milchama. This is uh, the coin who is um, kind of riles up the people and is very uh, involved right before the Yidden have to go to war. And um, after that, we discuss a little bit about the Urim Vitumim, which is very interesting. Kind of the way that the uh, Kohen Gadol can consult with, you know, like ask Hashem things and he would kind of, God would like give the answer by way of the Choshen. We're going to discuss that. Also, and then we get on to a new parak, the final, the eighth and final parak of Mesech Yoma, which is pretty cool. And Lemaise, we get into some of the halachis of Yom Kippur. Of course, Yom Kippur is famous for the five things that we don't do. No eating, no drinking. Things like right, uh, washing our hands, bathing. So, so we we get into those halachas now, beginning in the eighth parak. So, let us begin on daf ayin beis amud beis about four lines from the bottom. Be'elu neshalim b'urim v'tumim. So the Mishnah had said that whenever the kohen gadol um, needs to ask, uh, you know, use the urim v'tumim, which were in the choshen, uh, in order to ask God for something. So he would wear the eight garments of the, he would be, you know, the Kohen Gadol would be wearing the Shmon Begadim of the Kohen Gadol when he asks. And we'll see also that the Kohen Meshuach Muhammad, this Kohen, this Kohen whose role it was to sort of, you know, I don't know about, he's not necessarily a general, but he would kind of like, you know, he would be the one to make the announcements. Anybody who is scared of their sins, go home. Like, he's kind of running the whole pre-war stuff. So part of what he would do also is he, the Kohen Meshach Muhammad would actually ask the Urim Vitumim if they were going to be, um, victorious. So, he would also wear the Shemona Begadim when he does that. Be'elu Nishalan Bu'urim Vitumim Ki Asur Vdimi Omar. When Vdimi came, of course, from Eretz Yisrael to Bavel, he said the following, Begadim Shekoyen Gadim Shamish Boyen, Mashuach Muhammad Shamish Boyen. So, it says Rav Dimi, in the name of Rav Yochanan, no, not in the name of Rav Yochanan, Rav Dimi said, when he came there to Bavel, he said that the Shmona Begadim, Shekohen Gadol Meshamesh Boyen, the eight garments that the Kohen Gadol wears, Meshuach Muhammad Meshamesh Boyen, in the event that the Kohen Meshuach Muhammad would serve in the Beis HaMikdash, he would wear the Shmona Begadim. He would wear also the eight garments of the Kohen Gadol. Shneemar, as the Pazuk says, Uvig Dei HaKodesh Hashem Leaharin, that the um, holy garments that were to Aharon, Yiyu, Levan, of Acharov, will be to his children after him, and we make a drasha. It, it didn't need to say the words Acharov, it could have just said Yiyu, Levan, it could be to his children. So, Lemisha, Babigdula, Acharov. So, the drasha is that somebody who comes in greatness after him, i.e., who is somebody else that has Gedula, what's another Kohen that, that has, you know, a special position, that is the Kohen Meshuach Muhammad. So, the Kohen Meshuach Muhammad would also wear the Eight garments in the event that he would serve in the temple. Most of Rav Ada Bar Ahava, Rav Ada Bar Ahava, however, asks the following question. So basically, we had just said that if the coin Meshuach Melchama would serve in the temple, so he would wear the eight garments. Frekt Rav Ada Bar Ahava va'amilo kedi. Some say it was I don't know anonymous. I guess Yachol Yei Beno Shem Meshuach Melchama Misham Ishtachtov Kederich Shem Beno Shel. So we have a Brysa that says, the Brysa wants to know. The Brysa wants to know. We have a Allah when it comes to the Kohen Gadol. That who gets first dibs to be the next Kohen Gadol, right? When it's time for the Kohen Gadol to, um, I don't know, when, when it had, when it, the Kuna Gadol, it needs to be passed on to the next Kohen Gadol. So who gets first, you know, how do we decide who's next? So we say, Lemaisa, that if one of his children, is worthy of it, so it goes to that child first. So the shaila is, does this also apply to the Kohen Meshuach Melchama? Right, if you have a, a, a Kohen whose role it was to be this Kohen Meshuach Melchama, so when it's time for the new one, it, does his son get first dibs on that? So Tamad Omar, so the Brisa answers that the Pasuk says, Shivas Yom Yubisham HaKohen Tachtov Mi Banav. So it says that for seven days, the, the Kohen uh, who's coming from his children will wear the eight garments. So we, right, from which we learn out, Tachtov mi of that if one of his children, if one of the co- children of the Kohen Gadol is worthy of it, so his child has first dibs on the Kohen Gadol. Now it says, Asher Yavu al 
who will go into the Olam Oed. That is the conclusion of the Pasuk. And therefore we want to say that from the fact that we, the juxtaposition of Tacht of Mibanov, from which we learn out that if the Kohen Gadol's child is worthy of being the Kohen Gadol, so then he gets it. It says immediately after that, Asher Yavu Olam Oed, that he will go into the Olam Oed, i.e. he will go Lefnai V'Lefnim to the Kodesh HaKadoshim on Yom Kippur. Misha Roy Lavu Al Olam Oed, period. Somebody who is fit to go into the Olam Oed, i.e. the Kohen Gadol to the exclusion of the Kohen Mishuach Muhammad. Meaning, this Halacha, that if uh, this the child is worthy of it, so he gets first dibs, that is specific to the Kohen Gadol who goes into the Lefnai V'Lefnim to the exclusion of the Mishuach Muhammad who does not go Lefnai V'Lefnim. But Frakti Gemara, now this is Rav Adab Rahav's Kasha on Rav Dimi, Vim Isa, if it's true that even the Kohen Mishuach Muhammad wears the eight garments of the Kohen Gadol, well then, Mech Zachazi, he is fit to be go to be able to go Lefnai V'Lefnim on Yom Kippur. So the Kasha is that from the fact that the Brisa learns out that the child of the Mishuach Muhammad does not get first dibs on the roll because the Brisa is excluding the um, because the Brisa excludes him since he can't go Lefnai V'Lefnim on Yom Kippur right? The Brisa says only someone who goes Lefnai V'Lefnim on Yom Kippur his son gets first dibs i.e. the Kohen Gadol to the exclusion of the Mishuach Muhammad that the Mishuach Muhammad does not go Lefnai V'Lefnim on Yom Kippur or cannot go Lefnai V'Lefnim on Yom Kippur however asks Rav Adab Barahava that if Rav Dimi is correct, that the Mishuach Muhammad wears this, if he serves in the base of Mitosh, he would wear the eight garments. Well, then why can't he go into the Kodesh Hakodashim on Yom Kippur and do the Avoda in the Kodesh Hakodashim on Yom Kippur if he's able to wear the Shmon and And from the fact that we're saying that the Mishuach Muhammad is not in a position to be able to do the Avoda uh, uh, in the base of Mitosh in the Kodesh Hakodashim on Yom Kippur, it must mean that he does not where the Shmona Vigadim. That's the Kasha and Rav Dimi. Om Rav Nachman Bar Yitzchak, Hachi Kamer. Says Rav Nachman Bar Yitzchak that this is what the Brisa means. It's, the Brisa isn't saying that the Mushuach Muhammad is not allowed to do the Avoda on Yom Kippur in the Kodesh Kodashim. That's not what it's saying. Koin so, so the Gemara answers by saying that what the Brisa means is that the position who is sort of like, almost like the definition, the main part of his position is that he goes lifnav lifnim on Yom Kippur, that's the person who transitions the position to his child. Not to say that a Kohen Mishuach Muhammad is not allowed to and cannot do the Avodah Lefnai Lefnim on Yom Kippur. That's just, that's not the, 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 the defining aspect of the role. The defining, the defining aspect of the role is, you know, doing the, you know, all the stuff pre-war. That's what the Mishuach Muhammad is. Can he technically do the Avodah Lefnai Lefnim on Yom Kippur in the Shemur and Yes. But it's not his main thing. And because it's not his main thing, he's not included in that drasha of 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 passing on the um, position to his child. Meisve, we got a kasha. Mushuach mulchama, enu mishamish lo ba arba kikoyin hedjet velo b'shmona kikoyin gadol. That's the kasha. The kasha is that we have a brisa that says that a coin mushuach mulchama does not serve in the temple in the four garments of. A regular coin, Vilo Bishmona Kohen Gadol. Nor does he serve in the temple in the eight garments of the Kohen Gadol. So we see the Brisa saying that the Mashuach Muhammad does not serve in the temple wearing the eight garments. So how could Ravdimi say that he um, does wear the eight garments if we have a Brisa saying that he doesn't wear four garments, he doesn't wear eight garments? Amar Abayi, but then Abayi says one second. But that can't make any sense, though. This brisa, there, 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 we must be missing something because El Azar Mashvizle. So what is he basically Azar? 
I mean, if he doesn't wear the four garments, he doesn't wear the eight garments, then what is he? Is he not even a coin anymore? Clearly something's up here. So he doesn't wear the four garments of the of a coin hedget because he's he's on a higher level. That we go up in Kedusha, we don't go down. And therefore, once already he has a special position of the coin Mishach Muhammad, he's not just going to wear the regular four garments of a coin hedget, but at the same time, the reason why he doesn't wear the eight garments of the coin Gadol is not because he, he you know, it's how about this? Let's, let's stay away from the negative. Let's go for the positive. The reason why he does not wear the eight garments of the coin Gadol is because of Ava. Because we don't want to create like competition or really animosity between the coin Gadol and the coin Meshach Muhammad. Meaning that Me'ikar Adin, really the Meshach Muhammad does wear the eight garments of the coin Gadol, like Rav Dimi is saying. The only reason why he doesn't is because of this, you know, concern of Eza, of Eva, of animosity. We don't want to create any kind of, you know, uh, negative feelings between the Koin Gadol and the Meshach Muhammad, you know, competition for the position. So therefore we say, look, you know, the Meshach Muhammad, you know, uh, um, um, you know, essentially, what's the word I'm looking for? Lemaise? Is that the word I'm looking for? Ugh. All these yeshivish words, it gets confusing when you use which one, you know? So, 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 uh, where were we again? We were like talking about something important here. So, really, exactly. So we're saying that at the end of the day, in practice, so the, so the, the, the Mishuach Muhammad doesn't wear four garments, doesn't wear eight garments, doesn't wear four garments because he's not a Korean hedger, and he doesn't wear eight garments because we don't want to create animosity. That's all it's saying. But, Me'ikra Adin, can the Kohen, or even, you know, really, Mida Oraisa, does the Kohen Mishuach Muhammad wear the eight garments of the Kohen Gadol? The answer is yes. But, you know, in reality, he doesn't add because of Eva. So, so really, Rav Dimi is correct. Om le Ravadabar Abba le Rava. So, Ravadabar Abba says to Rava. So, basically, we had just said a second ago, Supporting Rav Dimi, that really Meikar Adin, the Kohen Mishuach Mulchama does wear the eight garments if he were to serve in the temple. But because of a technicality, because of Eva, he doesn't wear the eight garments. Now, Frech of Adabar Abba, Rava, the high time delay slay Eva, Veloka Mishamish. But I'm going to bring you right now a Brisa where we have an opinion who is not concerned about Eva. So this technicality about animosity is not a thing, and yet the Kohen Mishuach Muhammad does not wear the Shemona Begadim. Based on what we just said a minute ago, if not for the concern of Eva, he would wear the Shemona Begadim if he serves in the temple. Yet we have a Brisa which is not concerned about Eva, Eva and still the Brisa is saying that the Kohen Mishuach Muhammad does not wear Shemona Begadim. The Tanya, as we learn in the Brisa, Dvarim Shabin Kohen Gadol, the Kohen Hedget, so there are differences between a regular, uh, between a coin gadol and a regular coin. Okay. Skip the next two words. Parabola kola mitzvahs. The, um, first nafkamina is that a coin gadol, if he makes a mistake and he does, if, if he does a, uh, a vera for which um, normally you'd be high of car, meaning for, if you did it on purpose, you'd be high of cars. So generally, a regular person were to bring, he would bring a, um, korban chatas. However, uh, like a regular goat or whatever. So, but a kohen gadol brings a cow. Right? So, par ko, abba, akola mitzvah. For any mitzvah that he'd be high of cars for, if he did it by accident, he would bring a cow. Ufar yom akipurim. Also the par chatas and yom kippur. Vasir seifa, the minchas chavitin every day. Vilo poreh, vilo poreh. If he's in oval, he does not grow out his hair like most of them do. He does not rend his garments. He can uh, rend his garments at the bottom, like by his hems of his clothing. The hedget milamala, whereas a regular coin hedget would, would rend his garments on, if somebody passed away, uh, just like regularly, his shirt or whatever. The in metami the krovov, the coin gadol does not become tame to his, um, immediate relatives, but a coin hedget can. Mitzuva ala b'sula, the Kohen Gadol Dafka needs to marry a virgin, a b'sula. Umuzra ala almona, he's not allowed to marry a widow. Umachzer es 
And when the Kohen Gadol dies, so then uh, the Ir Miklat empties out. All of the um, people who had killed other people by accident while the Kohen Gadol was alive, they can leave their Ir Miklat when the Kohen Gadol dies. Umakriv Onen. Wow. What do you think the Nafkamina was in the second base Amikdash when there was like a new Kohen Gadol every year? So basically the Ir Miklat would like empty out every year, I guess. All right. Onen. As we've learned in the past, a coin gadol, if he's an onen, right? Somebody passes away, not yet buried. So the coin gadol can nonetheless do avodah in the Besamitash ve'enu ocha, but he doesn't eat the korbanis. He can offer them, but not eat them. Ve'enu cholek, and he doesn't take any, you know, while he's an onen, he doesn't, um, you know, uh, take parts of the, uh, animals for him to eat, even, you know, even to eat at night. After he's no longer an onen, nonetheless, he does not do that. Now the Kohen Gadol, in general, he could choose whichever parts of the Korbanos he wants. And he can choose whichever parts of the animal he wants to offer. And he wears the eight garments, which is of course going to be important. If he, um, he's potter, I guess if he goes into the base when he's tummy. Davka, he has to do the avodas of Yom Kippur. Vuchula nohagos bermuba begadim. And all of this applies to the meruba begadim. Now, there are two ways to become a Kohen Gadol. One is the Shemin Mishra, but as we learned about, I think it was in Mesech Toshkalim, um, maybe we even learned about it here in Mesech Yoma, but I think the, the real, I think the discussion that we had, the real discussion that we had was in Mesech uh, was that after Yoshio hid away the Shemin Mishra, so then the, um, priests, the Kohen Gadol, would become the Kohen Gadol, not by the Shemun Mishra because it was hidden away, but by putting on the Shemun Begadim. So, uh, so, all of these halachas of the Kohen Gadol apply both to a Kohen Gadol HaMushuach B'Shemun Mishra as well as the Kohen Gadol HaMuruba Begadim. Chutz, in Paraba, I'll call a mitzvah, the only um, nafkamina being the Paraba I'll call a mitzvah, that the, that the Muruba Begadim would not bring the um, um, uh, cow, you know, if he does a, if he does a, a, a an Avera that would normally have a Chiyav Kars, he would not bring that cow. He would just, I guess, bring a regular sheep or goat. V'chulun nohagos b'mshuach sh'avar and all of the halachis of the Kohen Gadol apply to mshuach sh'avar, which we learned about much earlier in Masech Yoma, that if there would be any psul in the Kohen Gadol uh, for Yom Kippur, so then there would be the person that would take his place to do the Avoda, and then afterwards the Kohen Gadol, when he was fit again, would go back to his position, and then you have the fellow who did the Avoda on Yom Kippur, is now Mshuach Sha'avar. So all the halachas of Kohen Gadol apply not just to the Kohen Gadol, but also to the Mshuach Sha'avar, Chutz Mi Payom HaKippurim, except for the fact that the Mshuach, that the um, Mshuach Sha'avar would not do the Paranum Kippur, because there would only be one, and that would be done by the Kohen Gadol. Vasir Sa'efa also he does not bring the daily minchas chavitin. That is, you know, the Kohen Gadol does that. Not the Mishuach Shavim Chulin. Ein nohagus Mishuach Milchama. Chutz Michamishu Devarim. Now, all the things that we said by a Kohen Gadol, they do not apply to the Mishuach um, Milchama. Only five things apply to the Mishuach Milchama. Chutz Michamishu Devarim. Amur beparsha. Lo porev lo porim. In the event that somebody passes away, he does not grow out his hair, he does not rend his garments. For the the Krovov, he does not become Tomei to his immediate relatives. He needs to marry a Besula and he is not allowed to marry an Amana. Now, according to Yehuda, also, uh, when the Meshuach Milchama dies, so then all of the um, accidental murderers in the ear, in the ear, in the ear, in the ear, in the ear Miklat, they get to go home. The Chacham Om Eino Machzer. Whereas the Chacham say that um, when the Mishach Muhammad dies, the people in the Ir Miklat do not go home. Now, here's the Kasha. The Kasha is that we see in this Brisa that the Kohen Gadol has no problem with the uh, Mishach Sha'avar wearing, I don't know what I just said, but the, in the Brisa there's, the, well, I guess the Kohen Gadol, he, in the Brisa, there's no issue of Eva. There's no issue of whether it's jealousy or animosity between the Kohen Gadol and the Meshuach Sha'avar with regard to the Shemona Begadim. Right? Right? We said that everything applies to the Meshuach Sha'avar. We said there was two differences. The, the, the Asir Sa'ifa, the, the Par 
Par Yom Kippur. Other than that, the Meshuach Sha'avar and the Kohen Gadol are the same thing. And we don't say, well, what about the animosity between the Kohen Gadol and the Meshuach Sha'avar? That's not a thing. So therefore, from the fact that there's no issue of animosity between the Meshuach Sha'avar and the Kohen Gadol, so we see that animosity is not a, th- is not a concern in this price. And yet, we say that when it comes to the Meshuach Mochama, there are only five similarities, none of them being the Shemona Begadim. I.e., we see that even though the author of this b'risa is not concerned about Eva, nonetheless, he still says that a Meshuach uh, Mochama does not wear eight garments, and therefore Abaye's suggestion that, technically speaking, Rav Dimi is correct, that a Meshuach Mochama does wear the eight garments, just that because of Eva, he doesn't wear the eight garments, yet we now have a b'risa which says that even when you're not concerned about Eva, you still wouldn't wear the eight garments. Chavir, you hear the kasha. And for the Gemara, ki leis le'eva b'dikavose b'dizutumine isle. And for the Gemara, that the reason why there's no animosity between the Kohen Gadol and the Meshuach Sha'avar is because they're on the same level, ki'ilu. The Meshuach Sha'avar, Mamish became the Kohen Gadol for a day. On Yom Kippur, when the Kohen Gadol was um, no longer, it was not fit to do the service, so the Meshuach Sha'avar stepped up and became a, vo- a Kohen Gadol. So therefore there's no animosity between the Kohen Gadol and another person who's also Kohen Gadol. But the, 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 the Meshuach Sha'avar is not quite on the level of the Kohen Gadol. And therefore, when you have somebody who's not quite on the level of the Kohen Gadol, wearing the clothing of the Kohen Gadol, it could create animosity. And because we want to avoid that, we say that out of concern of animosity, do not wear the eight garments. And therefore, in the Brisa, when we say that um, the Kohen Gadol and the Meshach Sha'avar both can wear Shemona Begadim and there's no, concern, there's no concern of animosity, that's between the Kohen Gadol and the Meshach Sha'avar. However, the reason why the Meshuach Milchama does not wear the Shemona Begadim is because of Eva, because we're concerned about animosity. Yosef Rabbo was saying this teaching of Ravdimi in front of Rabbi Yochanan that the Meshuach Milchama wears the Shemona Begadim, at least make her din. And Rabbi Bo said in the name of Rabbi Yochanan, Adrinu Rabbi Ami Rabbi Asi Apayu. And Rabbi Ami and Rabbi Asi turned away to indicate that there's no way that, Rabbi, that, that they could not accept that Rabbi Yochanan said that. There was just no way that, that he said that. Ikid Ami, that those who say, Rabbi Bar Abba, Omra, Vajunu Rabbi Ami, Rabbi Asi Apayu. That those who say that it was Taka, not Rabbi Abba, but that it was Rabbi Bar Abba who said it, and Rabbi Ami and Rabbi Asi turned away their heads to indicate that they did not accept the fact that Rabbi Yochanan could have possibly said this. Maskev of Papa, or Papa asks the Kasha, B'Shlomo Babo, Mishum Yikar, Devei Kesar. Says, Rabbi Papa, I understand why Rabbi Ami and Rabbi Asi would not want to be blunt with Rabbi Babo and say there's no, and, and, and say clearly that there's no way that Rabbi Yochanan said that because they have respect you know, for Rabbi Babo, meaning that Rabbi Babo was a very respect, respected person in society. He had a, he had a very, uh, um, he had a very good relationship with the Caesar, right? As Rashi points out, there's a Gemara in Sanhedrin that, right, that, 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 that depicts that when Rabbi Babo would show up at the, um, at the Caesar's house, all of the, uh, matrons of the Caesar would come out to greet him. He was, he was a well-connected person. So therefore, out of respect, and honor for Rabbi Bo, they didn't want to say there's no way that Rabbi Yochanan said that. Rather, they just kind of turned the other way. What, but if it's Rabbi Bo who said it, why don't they just tell him straight up? That there's no way that Rabbi Yochanan actually said this. Okay, that, so that's Rabbi Papa's kasha. So Papa's kasha. Also, we learned to Misaf the Brachos that Rabbi Bar Abba would taka review all of his learning in front of Rabbi Yochanan every 30 days. So maybe that's also a proof that Mistama, if Rabbi Bar Abba was saying the name of Rabbi Yochanan, it's probably true. So therefore, this maybe the story taka does make sense with Rabbi Bo, That I mean, Rabbi Bo is obviously Rabbi Bo, <laughs> no slouch. But uh, um, uh, but that and 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 the fact that um, um, you know out of the honor of Rabbi Bo, that 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 could explain why the Davka turned away. Ki also Ravin. Now, when Ravin came from Eretz Yisrael to Babel, Omar, he said, Nishal Itmar. That it doesn't say, 
Mishamish, it says Nishal, meaning if we read it back into what Rav Dimi said, right? This is what Rav Dimi said. Begadim Shkoyen Gadol Mishamish Boyen, that the Shmona Begadim that the Kohen Gadol wears, Mishamish Boyen Mishuach Muhammad, so Mishuach Muhammad would also wear them if he was doing service in the temple. Says Rav, no, it's not Mishamish Boyen, it says Nishal Boyen, meaning when the Kohen Mishuach Muhammad was asked, hey, should we go to war? Will we be successful? He would wear the Shmona Begadim when he was asked. Not, not if he was going to serve in the temple. If he was going to serve in the temple, he wouldn't wear the Shmona Begadim. However, um, um, when he's being asked, should we go to war? He puts on the Shmona Begadim when he answers that. Tanin Amiachim, we talk a little bit like this. Begadim, Shekoyen Gadim, Shamish Boyen, that the garments that the Kohen Gadol, the Shmona Begadim that the Kohen Gadol wears, Moshuach Muhammad Nishal Boyen. The Moshuach Muhammad when he's being asked, should, you know, if, 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 if the Yidin should go to war, he wears those same Shmona Begadim when being queried. Tana Rabbanon, the rabbis taught kids at Sho'alan, how would you ask, I guess either the Kohen Gadol or the Kohen Mishach Muhammad, meaning some, when you're asking the Urim Vitumim, in front of somebody who's wearing the Shmona Begadim, to find out from God if you should do something. So how does this work? So, a Sho'el Pan of Klape Nishal, so the person asking the question is facing the Kohen Gadol who's being asked the question. The initial point of Klap Eshchina, and the Kohen Gadol is looking and facing the um, Urim Vitumim. Hashoel Omer, now the, 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 um, the, the besitra, the quest, the, the querier, the person with the question would ask, Erdof Achri Agdud Hazeh, quoting from a pasuk from, I believe, David Amelech. So he says, should I chase after this legion? By initial Omer. And then the uh, response is, Ko Amar Hashem Ali Vahatzlach. So says God, go and you will be successful. Meaning, in that, that, that's how it was in that particular pasuk, but meaning the, 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 um, requester asks, hey, you know, is this going to work? And the, um, um, uh, Kohen Gadol, the Mishra Muhammad answers, Kohen Hashem, so says God, yes, it will work. Obviously, Mistama only if it was going to work. Rabbi Yehuda Omer says, Rabbi Yehuda, ain't so lomer Kohen Hashem, ela ali v'hatzlach. Right? You don't have to say, so says God, you could even just say, you know, go up and, and you will succeed. Ain't so alim b'kol, when you ask the Urim v'tumim, you don't say it out loud. Shenema v'sho al lo. You ask, he asks himself, Kilu, the, the person asking the question doesn't need to say it out loud, he could just say it so that he, is say, you know, just saying the words, but not audibly. But at the same time, you don't just think it. You have to, you have to say it. They, they, you have to ask it before God. Rather, just like Chana in her prayer, that Chana was speaking to her heart. She was whispering, um, right? It says, knows that her lips were moving, but you didn't hear anything. Now, you don't ask from the Urim Vitumim two things at the same time. You don't ask two questions without waiting for a response. And if you do ask for two things, you'll only get a response for one of them. And it's going to be for the first question that you ask. As the Pazuk says, I ask Giruni, that David Melech asks, Will the people give me over to Shaul? And then he also asks, is Shaul going to go down? Is he going to come? Vayomer, and the response is, Vayomer Hashem says God, Yered, yes, Shaul will come down. So we see that he asked twice, but only got one answer. But in the Gemara, but I thought we said they would get an answer for the first one. Meaning, David Melech asked two things. He said, are the people going to give me over to Shaul? And two, is Shaul going to come? And as we said, if you ask for two things at once, you're only going to get one answer. But we said that the answer was going to be for the first query. Yet, in this question, uh, over here, the second thing that he asked was, is Shaul going to go down? And the answer was, yes, yeah, Shaul will go down. I thought he would have gotten the answer for the first one. Elorishon David Shaul, Shalo Keseder, actually David asked out of order. So therefore, Verzir Lo Keseder, and the answer came in order. Meaning he first should have asked about if Shaul was going to come, and then he should have asked about if the people were going to give him over. Um, so even though he asked out of order, God answered him in order, which is why he answered about, yes, Shaul was going to go down. And then, when David realized that he asked out of order, so then he went back and, and asked, you know, um, the question that he was supposed to come second. The very next pasuk says, Hayas giruni Shaul, Hashem Yasgiru. 
that David HaMelech asks, are going to, the people of Keilah going to give me over to Shaul? And God says, yes, they will. Now, in the event that it was very urgent and Yumamish needed to get an answer to two queries very quickly, well then Machzir and Loshnaim, then you'll get an answer for both of your queries immediately. Shnemar, as the Pazuk says, Ve'eshal David Bashem Lemor, that David asked God saying, Ha'erdof achri agdur azeh, A, should I go after this legion? And two, Ha'asigenu, will I capture them? Ve'yomer lo ridof, and God says, yes, go, and ki'asig ta'asig v'atzil ta'atzil, because you will get them and you will, you will um, save says the Gemara that even though when a, a prophet prophecies, that could be reversed. As Rashi points out, Yonah ben Amita, Yonah, that we read of course on Yom Kippur Lamaise, right? It says, what was it? Od shloshi yomim, v'ninve ne'apecha, something like that, right? That Ninveh is going to be destroyed, but then they did Shuva and they didn't get destroyed. So even if a Navi says that, it could be overturned. However, if the Urim v'tumim say that, that's final. Shinamar, as the puzzle says, Bimishpa to Urim. The, 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 the judgment of the Urim, Kielu, it, judgments are final. Lamanikashman, Urim Vitumim. Why are they called Urim, like light, Vitumim, and complete? Urim, Shmeirin, as the Varian, that they light up their words. I think that's probably connected to what we're going to say in a minute. Tumim, Shmashlimin, as the Varian. And, um, Tumim is like, uh, I guess from Tom, from complete, that they are complete. Kielu, what they say is final. Say something or indicate something that is a final indication. And if you'll say, but wait, by the Pilegish Begiva, which was a story where there was a whole fight between Binyamin and the rest of the, 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 the people, and it, 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 uh, they asked the Vitum, hey, should we go fight against Binyamin? And they did not succeed. So, well, so the Gemara says, well, because they didn't ask if they were going to be, you know, uh, successful or not. They just said, should we go? And the women to him said, yeah, you can go. But they didn't say, go and you will succeed. And then in the end, when they said, hey, will we actually succeed? So then um, the women to him said, yes. You know, on day three, they said, yes, you will succeed. That Pinchas ben Elizabeth Aharon stood before him. Before the Um Vitumim on that day, Lamor to say, Should I go out to war with the people of Binyamin, my brother? Him Echdal, will I succeed? Vayomer Hashem, or Him Echdal, or I guess will I not succeed? Vayomer Hashem, Alu Kimachet Nenubiyadecha, and God says, Yes, go, because you, I, I will give them over to you tomorrow. Now, this is super interesting, friends. Kate said, Nice, how does the Um Vitumim exactly work? Like, what, what you ask and you get an answer, how does it work? Rabbi Yochanan Omer Boltos. So Rabbi Yochanan says, well, you had all of the Shvatim on the, uh, on the Choshen. So the Shvatim have letters. Reuven, Reish, Aleph, Vav, Bez, Kid, right? You know, you have all the letters written out of the Shvatim. So the letters corresponding to the word that needed to be spelled out. So for example, you know, if you say, should I go up and fight this war? And the Urim Vitum says, Ale, Ayin, Lamed, Hey. So finds an Ayin, finds a Lamed, finds a Hey. Boltos, and they would somehow stick out, and then you would know, okay, that's what we're talking about. Rishlakish so says that actually somehow they would even not just stick out, but they would like somehow come together. They would spell out the word. But one second, if you look at Reuven, Shimon, Levi, Yisachar, Zvulun, etc., there's no letter Tzadi. What if what you know? What what if it had to say um, Hatzel, right? What if it had to say Hatzel? So are, are you gonna? How are you gonna spell that? So I'm of Shmuel by Yitzchak, Avram Yitzchak, Yaakov, Ksivsham. It says of Shmuel by Yitzchak that in addition to the 12 tribes, it also said Avram Yitzchak, Yaakov. So of course Yitzchak has a tzadi. Valok Siv Tess. But still, you're not gonna find the letter Tess. Om Ravachu by Yaakov, Shivte Yishur, and Ksivsham. That in addition to saying Avram Yitzchak, Yaakov in the 12 tribes, it also says Shivte Yishur, and Shivte, of course, has a Tess. Meisve, we have a kasha. One second, we say that any Kohen who doesn't have Ruach HaKodesh and doesn't have the Shechina Shore on him, so you can't ask him from the Urim Vitumim. Because when they asked Tzadik, it worked. It was, right, and, and they were able to ask the Urim Vitumim. Whereas when they asked of Yosser, it didn't work out. Shinemar, as the Apostle says, Vayal, Ad, Tom, Kolaam, Vigomer. 
that um, if Yasser, um, what does the Pasuk say? Pasuk K. Um, um, wait, did I not look up that Pasuk? Well, suffice it to say that they asked Ev Yasser and it didn't work. Oh, right, and then he had to leave being a coin. Well, it didn't work with Ev Yasser, so we see that you have to ask somebody who's got the uh, Ruach HaKodesh and uh, the Shekhin Ashur. So, What's the kasha? The kasha is, I thought we're saying that in order to ask somebody from the Urim Vitumim, he has to like have Ruach HaKodesh. But if he has Ruach HaKodesh, then why do you need the letters to like stick out and spell words? I thought he just has Ruach HaKodesh. Can he just know this stuff on his own? So, Well, the Ruach HaKodesh would assist the um, letters to come out. Kilu, you wouldn't get these letters coming out and spelling words and stuff like that if you don't have Ruach HaKodesh. You need Ruach HaKodesh. Once you have Ruach HaKodesh, then you can get all of these... Um, Interesting answers with these letters. Now, not anybody can just come and say, "Hey, Kohen Gadol, I got. Can you ask God something for me?" It has to be, you know, specific positions. How do we know this? Amar Babod, Amar Krad. The pasuk says, "V'lefnei Elazar Akoin Yamod, V'shalo b'mishpat Urim b'Gomer." And it says at the end over there of that pasuk that, "Hu v'chol b'nei Yisrael ito v'chol Eida." So what does that mean? Uh, where am I? Who? So when the puzzle says who, he, Zemelech. That's a reference to the king. V'chol b'nei Yisrael ito, Zemel Shoch Muhammad. That's a reference to Shoch Muhammad. V'chol Eda Zos Sanhedrin. That's the Sanhedrin. Meaning, there are only specific elite uh, positions and people that are able to ask these things. The king can ask the, from the Urim V'tumim. The Shoch Muhammad, the Sanhedrin. But not just anybody. Chevre, Ajun Olach, Balo Koin Galo. We just finished the seventh parak of Mesech Yoma. Moving on. To the eighth parak of Masechta Yom. Yom Hakipurim also b'achilu v'shtir v'chitzu v'sichu v'nesa sandal v'tash m'shamita. You hear that, Chaver? Classic Yom Kippur. Let's read that again. Yom Hakipurim, Yom Kippur, also b'achilu v'shtir. Of course, right? What happens when you think? What's the first thing that comes to mind? Yom Kippur, or at least definitely one of the first things. Fast day. We don't eat. We don't drink. We v'chitzu. We don't wash our hands. I mean. You know, bare minimum. Uvsicha, putting on oil, vanilla sasando, wearing leather shoes, of course. Uvtash mishamita, um, sexual intercourse. Vamelech vakali chutsu espinem. The king, right, a king who has to be presentable and a, uh, a bride, as Rashi says, for the first 30 days of her marriage, she is allowed to wash her face. Vachayitin ola sasando, and a woman who is pregnant or giving, maybe even dafka, like giving birth. Um, a Yoleda, somebody giving birth, so then she can wear leather shoes uh, to stay warm or something. Divrei Rabbi Eliezer says Rabbi Eliezer v'chacham osin, and the chacham say that the king, the bride, and the woman giving birth are not allowed to wear these things. It's a low plug situation. No, uh, no, no exceptions. Ha'ocha kekoseves ha'gasa kamo So what's the amount that you have to eat on Yom Kippur? A large date, if you eat the size, enough food that's the size of a large date, the size of it and its pit, so then, uh, you're gonna be, uh, chayv, karis, for eating on Yom Kippur. Vashosim lo lugma of chayv. And a fellow who drinks a cheekful is going to be chayv. Haocha vashosa eimit starf. And if you eat a shtickle and drink a shtickle, they don't, they don't join together. Osir, frakta gemara, anush karisu. The Gemara asks, one second, wait a minute. Hold it, hold it, hold it. The Mishnah said, Yom Kippurim, Osir, Bachilu, Bashti, etc. Osir? Osir? Chayv Kares! Not just Osir. I'm a B'ila, Vitemu Reb Yirmiya, L'Nitzucha Ele L'Chatsi Shir. So it says, Reb Ila, in some says Reb Yirmiya, it's talking about somebody who eats less than the amount. Somebody who eats less than the amount, so he's not Chayv Kares. But he is over on a lav. It's not allowed. But well, that makes sense if you say that eating less than amount is also midaraisis. I get it. Okay, fine. So we're saying that eating is also if it's less than a, the the kosevas agasa. But what about the opinion that says that let you know um, eating less than an amount midaraisa is okay? Kilu. 
if you're not eating a kosevis agasa and you're kipper, so don't eat a kosevis agasa. If you eat a kosevis agasa and you're chayv karis, if you lessen it, you're not. So then what does osur mean? The idmars, we learn machlokas amurai. Chatzishir, Rabbi Yochan, Amur osur min ator, Rish Lakish, Amur mutu min ator. The Rish Lakish says that, that Rabbi Yochanan says that chatzishir is osur midor aisa. Rish Lakish says that it's mutu midor aisa. So I nichol Rabbi Yochanan and Rish Lakish, Michael and Meimar. So I understand Rabbi Yochanan's opinion. Meaning, I understand the Mishnah Quantra of Yochanan. So we're saying that Achille Bashti is Osir. Or at this point, I think the Gemara is still assuming that maybe he's talking about all five of them. But what do you mean? It's Chayiv Karis. No, we're talking about less than an Ashir, and therefore it's Osir Midor Aisa, but not Chayiv Karis. But according to, right? But according to, um, Rish Lakish, Michael and Meimar. But what can you say about according to Rish Lakish? Because according to Rish Lakish, Chatsi Shir is Mutter. So then what's Osir about these things? If it's not allowed, then it's chayiv karis. If it's if it's a shear, it's chayiv karis. If it's less than a shear, then it's mutter. So what's so what's just simply also without being chayiv karis? So modur yishlakish also midor abanan. And with that, we'll finish for now. So, but Reb Yochanan admit yishlakish admits that even though midor oraisa less than a shear is permitted, but midor abanan it's also. And therefore, when the Mishnah says that you're not that these things are simply also, we're talking about less than a shear. And it's also Midr Abbanon, is what it's saying. However, we'll stop here for now. Um, that was the fine Gimel. The first part of the Daf really dealt with the Shaila of a coin Meshuach Milchama, this coin in charge of sort of organizing the at least the first stages of war. So so if he's going to serve in the temple, does he wear the Shemona Begadim of the coin Gadol? According to Evdimi, the answer is yes. According to uh, right, the answer is yes, and then Abaye explained that the only reason why he doesn't, though, in practice, is because um, of Eva, that we don't want there to be sort of any any uh, competition there between the Kohen Gadol and the Meshach Muhammad. So he, in, in practice, he doesn't wear the Shemona Begadim, but technically he would. Ravin, however, says that no, the the, the Kohen Gadol does not wear the um, the um, the the Shemona Begadim. However, the, the, the Kohen Meshach Muhammad does not wear the Shemona Begadim. But if he's being asked, should they go to war or not? So at that point, he would wear the Shemona Begadim. Now, we then discussed how exactly you ask the Urim Vatum, right? We said that, right, specifically the king or the, um, Meshach Muhammad or the Sanhedrin, they can ask the Urim Vatum and you would face the Kohen Gadol and sort of, uh, or whoever you're asking, right, or the Meshach Muhammad, and you would kind of Whisper what you were saying, and then uh, you would get your answer. The Urim Batum would kind of light up the different letters on the Choshen, and that is how you get your answer. We then moved on to the final parak of Masechta Yoma, and we're discussing the uh, practical implications for people like you and me of Yom Kippur, right? We don't, right? Achila v'shtia, right? We said we don't eat and drink, right? V'chitza, sicha, ni'ila, sasandal, tash, shamita. Those are the things that we do not do on Yom Kippur. Then we saw a machlokas between Rabbi Yochanan and Rish Lakish regarding Chatsi Shir. Rabbi Yochanan says the Chatsi Shir is also Midor Raisa. Rish Lakish says that um, Chatsi Shir is Mutu Midor Raisa, but we want to say that it's also Midor Abanan. Cheva, we'll hold it for here. That was Daf. I'm Gimel of Masechta Yoma. I hope you enjoyed. Cheers.